Right, good morning fisher people. I'm Alan Norris from Fish on TV. It is Tuesday the 6th of December and uh, Tuesday means I'm fishing with the old boys. You are joining us at Viking Fisheries at Pollington and we are fishing the Hawk Pond. Not fished it for a while these guys. Fished it not long ago. I missed that match. I've got other commitments. Um, temperatures proper proper dropping now things will be in mega minter mode minter mode can't beat minter mode winter mode <laughs> mega minter mode get in um proper winter mode see where we get drawn there's a lot of lovely carp in here there's hide in here there's skimmers in here there's all sorts of stuff in here so um there's 16 of us today one or two Decided not to come because it can be a little bit boggy this time of year, so getting around to your pegs can be a little bit uh, hard work. But still a decent turnout, 16. My old mate Jeff, he's decided not to come, and Jimmy, so we'll see them on the next match. Tactics today, not 100% sure. I always like to set a little method up here, a little bomb rod, but I'm, I'm hoping it'll probably be mainly pole work. Um, I've just been thinking I did do some bread this morning for dobbing some bread and you know I can't remember if I put it in or not <laughs> but that wasn't going to be my main attack it can work quite well here it's corn maggot soft pellets sparingly on the feed and that's pretty much it so all the lads are getting the gear out I'll get my gear out we'll get the draw done and we'll see where we get drawn and see how today goes right see you at the draw Bombs off. 
Det är en sån här sån här Come on, you. We're not. We're not starting at half nine again. Are we? For Christ's sake. Yes, no. Thank you. That's the big that's winning the match. Ready. There's about six minutes, seven minutes to go. It's just enough time to get my camera set up. Put that down there. Peg 16 on Hawk Pond. I've got Nigel Middleton in on end peg corner peg there. I've got my old mate Frank, well fish Frank over there. He's the expert here at Lindo at Lindholm at uh, Viking. I've got Gluey smack opposite on peg 11. That's a great peg, I've had some great days on there, I've won a couple of matches on that peg and I actually caught that day on Bomb and Corn, brilliant peg, Bonzo's behind him can't see who's further down, I know Ringer's on Cyanide straight as they call it here, he's not happy about that, he draws it every time I don't know where, oh Mr Incredibles right over there and my mate Franny, late as usual, he's over there end peg, he's got absolutely loads of room here, really fancy him we're catching a few there don't know what this peg's like folks, but this is what I've set up it's shallow, goes deep and then comes back up towards the bank there, typical type snake lake, I've set i found like a fairly firm bit, sort of top three and two round about four foot deep and then I've come off the bank, I can, I can alter that right up to some bushes there, well I'm not sure what it is actually, it looks like a, there's something in the water, a nice little feature. I can dob about with either bread and maggots or pellet, so I'm thinking soft pellet and maggot down here, have a little dob about with no feed whatsoever to start with, just have a look. Um, and then margins, We've got a nice margin down here, and then I've I've got the same depth just a bit further out short down here which I can I can handball a few pellets and things down there or maggots whatever I decide and then I've got method and bomb rod they can work really well here um, I'm hoping that it'll be a pole day but I've had days on that peg 11 just on bomb all day and depths of winter zero degrees and had 100 pound of fish out don't know what it's going to fish like today, it is freezing folks, I know it's nice and bright, it's going to be the warmest day this week, minus three tomorrow, so we do some really cold spells. Bait wise, micros, maggots, some crushed expander that'll just um, that'll kick the peg off, I've, it's quite wet is that so just give it a squish, it's very very wet is that, that's to help kick the peg off, some softened pellets there, some corn and soft pellets. And that's that's it folks so uh, we're off in a few minutes let's see how the day goes steady approach to start with um, I don't think it'll be a lot of feed let's just keep it as simple as we can and hope we get a few fishes so there we go we are off in two minutes so I'll get this camera set up we'll see you during the match right I've done dobbing about oh, a couple of hours in now I've really been struggling, I've lost three cap and everyone I've hooked has gone absolutely barmy. I've just gone on to a bomb, a feather bomb line just over there with a bit of some corn. I've only been in a minute and a half and it's gone straight round. It, this again, you'd think we're in the middle of summer, it went absolutely barmy and the other three have as well. And they were just up pulls. I've lost three cap and I've got two skimmers off my short line down here but there's not a lot been 
really been struggling to get by it's Nigel's had a couple in corner I think Franny's had about three Tony's got a couple opposite and Bonzo he's had a few um, I've really been struggling I've seen Frank get one or two small ones I think that's uh, the ones I hooked on the pole you'd think they were foul up to where they went but they weren't I know you're wondering well how do you know you can just tell it where it feels and the way this went, this just went absolutely crazy. I can't believe that they're uh, fighting as hard as this at this this time here because it's the bream that I've pulled out. I'm literally freezing. I'm surprised they aren't solid with that gold. I mean, look at this. Bonzo's in again. He's doing well, his bonds off peg nine. Good area there on corner. I have no idea what this area is like around here. I kind of fished it once before. I'm not sure I did that great. Oh, Niger's in as well. He's on rod as well. So Bonzo's on rod, Niger's on rod. But I've just been all along that bank. I've even settled on a spot, put a bit of few micros that have expanded out down. I've tried maggot, I've tried pellet, I've tried dobbing bread about. I actually got the fish dobbing double dead red. But uh, once I'd lost those three, I had a sign for ages. Probably stayed on it a bit too long because I thought there'd be a few carp there. So it's not exactly going to plan, but that can't, this is pretty right, absolute right scrap up, it just will not get its head up. Come on, son. It's a decent size, like, to be fair. Not massive, but it's a decent, it's a fair size. Yeah, it's got to be six, seven, seven pound. Maybe eight, actually. Belting looking fish. Not that many clothes on, I can hardly bend over. Beautiful fish. <sighs> Shall we see if we can get him out? Let's have a look, because he is a beautiful looking fish. <sighs> you don't know what's going around here, folks. Let's have a look. Try. Uh, I'm not going any further than that because he's feeling a bit lively still. It's a good fish. <laughs> but you know what will come in there, don't you? <laughs> if I'd have lifted him up any more, he would have been straight in. So a little, little piece of corn. And it might be worth actually now seeing that trying a bit of corn over there but we'll we'll see how it goes I've had three little underarm chucks over there it plops in lovely wind underarm chuck no noise whatsoever and I did, had a couple of indications that worth lifting out so let me get back straight, straight back in I don't believe it cameras do you know I've not touched anything and I've just re thought I was recording another car I've just had one about five pounds when I turned around and looked at the camera, too busy concentrating landing the fish. I don't know what it was on it, but just seen zero. It looked like it was <laughs> taking a picture or something ridiculous. So I do apologise for that, folks. I literally chucked that in, went to dry my hands. It was in 50 seconds. 
at the very most and I didn't see the bike, I just heard it. I literally turned around like to get my towel, bang, I just heard a clunk. That was lose your rod tackle. Good job, I've got the right gear on. Otherwise, that would have been in. And you won't be able to see where I'm, well, you might actually, I'm not sure. I'm just doing a little underarm jock. Can't even hear it. Can't even hear it, folks. It just plops in. It just goes blip. Peachy. That's what I call peachy. Well, that's in. I literally went like that. <laughs> Plunk. So last time I had a great day on corn here, there were just little poles that were weird, and today they're absolutely smashing rod around like you were in the middle of summer. Right, there we go, let's see if we can get another. Oh, it's gone again, folks, it's like, not, not straight away, I have two little puttings. I've only been having like five minute chucks. And it's gone again, and there's definitely fish there because I'm getting liners. It's a bit too far away from my pole. There's no point going on pole, and tips going around like that on bomb. Going in with a nice little plop. Keep firing maybe five or six pieces of sweet corn and going over the top. And that's gone round after two minutes and 30 seconds. There's definitely a few fish there because I've had a line on every putting I've, I've gone in with. And my plan was to go use corn down in margin, so I can't see that with some. Wrap around it. Can't see it. There we go. Oh yeah, bloody thing. Hard to see the fish with. Four and a half. So again, nice little fish. Quarter ounce bomb on. And it just goes in and picking what I think is the perfect piece of corn. I'm not putting a big piece on it, it's just like the, the medium size piece. I've scaled down with the line, a 015 and a 16 hook. Fluorocarbon hook length. Air rigged with a quick stop. I don't know if you can see that. There we go. I'm not going to fire any corn in this time because I've literally just just fired some out there. I'm not sure how much bait they're wanting. Not quite far enough that one. Wait a bit. Give it a little bit more. There we go. Lovely little plop again. Love that. Just love the loving the plop. If you do go a bit far, which they're definitely off the bank. You can just wind it in that little bit. Put it exactly where you want. There we go. The sat is trapped. Apparently I said, I'm one of them. <laughs> the trap is set. Johnny Arthur. <laughs> they were the first one to pick up on it and then one or two others have picked up on it as well. I like talking double dutch. It's brilliant. <laughs> Put your timer on, 
now. There we go. Just a very slight bend in the tip. Because that bite wasn't as aggressive as the others. It was just a, just a six inch positive pull. Whereas the others are just cracky. You'd lose your rod if you'd have left it. So the little underarm cast goes in a lot quieter, 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 quieter than an overhead cast. It takes a bit of practicing, but once, once you get used to doing it, you just see it just makes no noise hardly at all. Brilliant. I was hoping it might just go round straight away, folks, but it's the first time I've not had a liner. Put a couple of pieces of corn out. And they're definitely moving for this corn when I catapult it in because I've seen liners as soon as I put it in. There we go, that's straight round, just a little catapult in it. Can you see that, folks? Straight round. Loop in my line, how it appeared. It must have been on the cast. Well, at least the tip's going round, folks. That was a real positive pull. It's always when you're doing something, so that was just over a minute that. And it's not been like this all morning. I just start to feed a few pieces of corn and then I've gone on it about half an hour later. Oh, he thought about coming up then. And he has. There we go, another one, about five pound. Let's hope they keep coming folks. I'm due to feed the margin surely. In about half an hour. There we go. Simples. Bring all this bait and all this tackle, all you need is a bomb rod and a bit of corn. <laughs> right, over and out. Right, I've had another one. I said there were a few fish there. I could just tell. And uh, it's gone again after a minute. Four or five pieces of corn. And <laughs> Fran is chucking over my way now. <laughs> Bless him. <laughs> it's a big catch. I've got about 30 pounds now. So I've literally gone from really struggling. In the last half hour I've had to 30 pounds. And again this set up like, like a crazy fool. I ain't going no plain fool. Say me and Woody were 18, but <laughs> B team at mint. <laughs> oh dear. Yeah, I know what Dave means now, at least you can't miss these bites, they're just smashing around. None of them little finicky little pink pink, they just smash around. So there we go, folks. Another 
five or six pounder. We'll put six on. Just to be on the safe side. Right. Another one and a half chuck. See if we get another. Right. Not had anything for the last half hour. Had a nice little run. And Franny set a casting towards where I was. And he's had at least, I think, but he's had four as well. But it's gone funny for both of us now. I've just gone over here on Bomb because I've noticed that Bonzo has also been catching on Bomb. He's put another net in. So he's he's doing really well as well. <coughs> I've just seen a mink trying to drag a carp up. But Frank scared mink off and put carp back in. <laughs> he had it just about to pull it out at the bank. So well done, Frank. And just before this cold weather knocks batteries out, and just as I was about to explain to, to you that who oh, are oh, catching what and who oh, are doing what, tip's just gone round from there and it's been in four and a half minutes. So I think Franny's beating me because he, he's had three early fish as well. So he's got about seven or eight carp. I think I've got about five, five or six. Nigel's had a few in corner as well, but he's not had much late for the last hour or so. I've got him. Not the biggest. But welcome, and I fed the margin down there to my left. Lively these fish, I can't believe how lively they are today. Considering how cold it is. So there we go folks. Let's get back in. A couple more into the margin soon. Let's go around again. That line to my right slightly. Got about 35 40 minutes left. And I've got to have a look in that margin. And what do you do when it keeps going round on the bomb? I'll have another quick look on the bomb. I'm going to come up then, but it just managed to turn his head. Mighty battle up, mighty. Bennett, I can't believe how aggressive they've been today. Unreal. So I'm getting your head up. There we go. About five, five and a half pounder. That takes me up to roughly 49-ish, I think. There we go, folks. Over now. Right, folks, there's one minute to go. Well, not quite a minute, actually. I've just hooked into another. Franny's had a couple on pole as well. Tried the margin, and I've had nothing. 
and they're, they're already saying, wait while I've got a fish on, it's 14.59, ready to go on to three o'clock. So that's just for you doubters in my club. I don't think it's enough, folks. I think Franny's done me. And Bonzo's had quite a few as well. I'm gonna keep me on time. Time! Fish on. I've got one on. <laughs> They're going mad again, folks. They're going mad. <laughs> They're calling me all sorts of names. They're all calling me all sorts of names, folks. I get some right stick for it, I'll tell you. <laughs> Here we go, look. There you go. That's for you doubters in my club. <laughs> Right, there we go folks, that's the end of the match and um, we shall see you at the weigh-in. of a walk through that mud boggy season unfortunately right where did I draw a peg 16 so my plan was down the down the track and just on the slope towards the uh, the island it was 14 meters just short of 14 meters 13 and a half meters something like that just over 13 and a half found some nice depth Plan was to no feed to start with anywhere, see what's going off around me, have a dob about. I decided a uh, double dead red to have a dob about with. Nige caught one or two on bread. I did dob about with bread and I didn't have a touch. But I did hook into three very angry carp, which I lost. I lost all three. 
and then after that I could not get a bike for love and money so I've come on my short line I probably spent too long dobbing about then I put some feed in a little bit of feed just to see if we could bring something in nothing absolutely nothing it was uh, pretty dreadful so I've come short I've had three indications I've had two skimmers just over a pound but then nothing and I've probably spent two hours 20 minutes maybe two and a half hours on the pole absolutely nothing it, it was just rock out I, I just couldn't get a bite anywhere Franny had one or two around the island and he got those in I think I think he said he did lose three or four altogether Nige said he lost four I've lost three those fish today when you hooked into them were so angry it was ridiculous I couldn't believe it in the meantime now and again I've fired some corn to my left and then I've gone on to it and I've had a nice little run I've had at least half a dozen or so carp um, Franny's spotted where I've been chucking and he's chucked to his right even though I had loads of room to his left absolutely acres he's chucked towards where I was catching fish and he's had four or five maybe six himself he was allowed to cast there don't get me wrong but it just makes it more difficult when there's two lots of bait going in two lots of bombs even though I was going in quiet hardly any noise it did affect it it did affect it and it affected him as well eventually would I have got some more I probably think so if he hadn't, if he hadn't have chucked over there who knows Franny you poaching sod <laughs> not really poaching folks it was quite within his rights where he was casting so I, I didn't have a problem I just knew I just thought damn it but that's what you do if you see somebody catching one way or another this is why looking around seeing what other people do I know a lot of people say never mind what other people do that's wrong wrong attitude see what other people are doing if you're not doing well start doing the same and that's pretty much what he did and he's done well um, a few of the other lads have, have seen what were happening and done the same and started catching so being aware of what's happening around you the other anglers it's not panicking it's being aware of what's going off so it's a little bit of a lesson learned for you people that disagree with that you need to do it you need to be aware of what's going off what, what people are catching on how they're catching are they feeding a lot are they not feeding a lot and Fran is pretty much mirrored what I were doing and it's bumped his weight up so well done Franny I've had a look in the margin I had two I wouldn't say one of them were a proper indication I think it was a liner and then I had another indication and again even though the float shot under I think it's just pulled it under going across the line and I've bumped out of that one and I've not had a sign after that gone back out on the bomb I ended up with two areas on the bomb and I've nicked a few more fish one right at the end as you've seen bang well it was 14.59 when I hooked into it a lot of controversy they say I wait for I wait for, until I get a bite at the end not true folks I shout exactly on three o'clock and at 14.59 I hooked into a car round about three and a half pound and bobbed that in the net Bonzo on peg nine good area he's been catching steady today as well so let's get on to the results a bit dark I hardly see out right your section winners Jack Vaughs peg 33 with 20 pound nine ringer peg 24 30 pounds three and John Whitehead 30 pounds five from peg seven there was all the rest of the guys in the other section chucked back so with a spare 15 quid which will go towards buying some new legs for his wane scale so Bonzo tried to claim it he's a guest wants to try and rule the roost Bonzo get yourself off <laughs> that's all I'm saying mate right so there's 15 quid towards a brand new pair of legs because the other ones are they're just not quite stable enough they're wearing out a little bit so what a set of mighty fishermen you guys are well done guys for winning your section top three in third place from peg 16 it's close the top three 53 pounds and three ounces yours truly so what a mighty fisherman i am well done me yeah in second place a guest bonzo 54 pounds 
Was it three? Can't read it. It's either 13 or three. Can't read it. It's just a bit of a scribble across it. So whichever it is, well done, Bonzo. On second place, what a mighty fisherman you are. Well done, son. And in first place, where are you? With 56 pounds and 10 ounces. So very close. There's like, what? Three pounds between the top three. Franny. Peg 18. It's been performing well. Margaret come out and said these pegs are doing well and that was one of them. So uh, well done, Franny. 50, uh, 56 pounds. 56 pounds 10 you are this week's old oh boys mightiest fisherman <laughs> well done franny you poaching sod <laughs> now he fished well he went back out on pole later and he had two or three cap at the end good job he did otherwise me and bonzo would have picked him all ifs and buts folks in it all ifs and buts two and a half hours without a bite and then i caught that in the last two and a half hours so thoroughly enjoyed it some nice fishing there. Those fish were particularly angry today. It was ridiculous. Even on the rod, they just went screaming away. It would, ugh, I couldn't believe it. But thoroughly enjoyed it. And a great day's fishing. This time of year, it's gonna be iced over. I reckon in the next few days, we've got some really low temperatures turning up. So I'm just looking, what is it? Oh, it's a magpie. So, uh, Things are going to get very difficult and I'm sure those fish will be balling up in certain places. Right, that's the insights to Viking fishes for the old boys on Hawk Pond. Thoroughly enjoyed it. Thanks, Laurie and Margaret. Plenty of fish to be caught down here. A um, little bit boggy getting to some of the pegs, but apart from that, lots of fish to be caught. Great little fishery, so get yourself down. I'm sure you'll enjoy yourself. Right, where are we next? I've nothing this weekend, so a little rest for me this weekend. I may, may go to the carp on Sunday, see how things are with work and things. And then I'm going to try and book Aphia Lakes for next Tuesday, or somewhere where we can just park behind this pegs. So thanks for watching, folks. Hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget, freebie, absolutely free to subscribe to my channel. It's completely free. Absolutely for nothing, isn't it? free nothing zero and get yourself subscribed if you click the notification bell you'll get all our videos as we upload them and a thumbs up would be very very nice so until next time folks take care and don't forget fish on